Chapter 8 Planning Work Activities Here's another couple videos on futuristic thinking. Let's take a look at both of these. The objectives of the day are define the nature and purposes of planning, classify the types of goals of the organization might have and the plans they might use, compare and contrast approaches to goal setting and planning, know how to set goals personally and create a useful functional to-do list, develop your skills at helping your employees set goals, discuss temporary issues in planning. So why should manager plan? We can give, give you at least four reasons. First, planning provides direction to managers and non-managers alike. When employees know that their organization or work unit is trying to accomplish and what they must contribute to, to reach their goals, they can coordinate their activities, cooperate with each other, and do what it takes to accomplish those goals. Next, planning reduces uncertainty by forcing managers to look ahead, anticipate change, consider the impact of change, and develop appropriate responses. Although planning won't eliminate uncertainty, managers plan so they can respond effectively. In addition, planning minimizes waste and redundancy. When work activities are coordinated around plans, inefficiencies become obvious and they can be corrected or eliminated. Finally, planning establishes the goals or standards used in controlling. When managers plan, they develop goals and plans. When they control, they see whether the plans have been carried out and the goals met. As Exhibit 8.1 shows, these type of plans aren't independent. That is, strategic plans are usually long-term, directional, and single-use. Whereas operational plans are usually short-term, specific, and standing. Can you think about a personal instance in your life when you use a long-term or an operational plan? A problem with traditional goal setting is that when top managers define the organization's goals in broad terms, such as achieving sufficient profits or increasing market leadership, these ambitious goals have to be made more specific as they flow down through the organization. Managers at each level define the goals and apply their own interpretation and biases as they make, their, make them more specific. However, what often happens is that clarity is lost as the goals make their way down from the top to the organization to the lower levels. Many times, companies try to achieve short-term profitability like reducing the labor force, decreasing quality, or changing procedures to reduce costs, but they also increase customer dissatisfaction. How does advertising on a site like Groupon affects a company's long-term profitability? What changes can it cause within an organization? And, fi and finally, how could you use Groupon to avoid the negative side effects of advertising with them? Management by objectives have been around for decades. This process uses an organization structure to make sure that you think through a problem logically. Take a moment and think about how you could use this approach to solve a problem within your life. Let's talk about well-written goals. Managers should be able to write well-written goals. What makes a well-written goal? Take a look at Exhibit 8.4. I want you to take a moment and write a goal for your future career, and we will discuss it in a moment. Another example of writing well-written goal is something called SMART goals. SMART goal stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. Goal setting has been around for centuries. A few decades ago, a person came up with the acronym of SMART goals. Exhibit A5 shows the relationship between a manager's level in the organization and the type of planning done. 
For the most part, lower level managers do operational planning while upper level managers do strategic planning. Both type of people are critical for the success of an organization. Few people have the skills to do both. Are you a better planner or someone who executes well? A manager's ability to analyze the external environment may be improved by environmental scanning, which involves screening information to detect emerging trends. One of the fastest growing forms of environmental scanning is competitive intelligence, which is gathering information about competitors that allow managers to anticipate their competitors' actions rather than merely reacting to them. It seeks basic information about competitors. Who are they? What are they doing? And how will they be affecting us? Let's form into small groups and do the in-class assignments. Once again, here's the optional homework that will assist you in preparing for the final exam.